Number 11 then, from the 2016 Advanced Higher Mathematics of Mechanics. Only four marks for this question, but it takes quite a wee bit of working here. You've got this uniform lamina, so it's a thin sheet. And it's formed between this curve, y equals x cubed, and the line x equals 4, and the x-axis. So what is the centre of mass of this, wherever it happens to be? Where could you put a pinpoint under that to balance it? Don't know, having a guess there. So in other words, what are the coordinates, x bar and y bar, of this centre of mass? Well, the way you get the centre of mass is by taking moments. We take x first of all. The moment of that whole shape about the y-axis. Let's call m the mass of the whole shape. The moment of that whole shape, so the mass times the distance of its centre of mass from the y-axis, is the same as the sum of the moments of all the little bits of shapes that make it up, all the individual little... M I X I's, and that's the way you would do it if it was something made up of distinct shapes like a square and a circle added onto it and so on, where you know the centres of those individual little ones. But one thing you can do here is you don't need to work with mass, because since it's a uniform lamina, you know that the mass will be equal to the mass per unit area times the area. So in other words, those would cancel out from both sides, so it's really just going to be the area of the whole shape times x bar will be the sum of the areas of the individual little bits and pieces times the distance to their centres. And since you've not got distinct shapes, you're just going to have an integration here. Because the individual little bits you'll use will be these little strips here which would approximate closer and closer to rectangles, the thinner you make it. Now the area of that little shape would be its height times its width. Its height will be y, its width will be dx, so its area is y dx. And its moment about the y-axis will be the distance to it, which is simply x. OK, it's actually x plus a half of dx, but dx is tending to zero, so that just tends to x. So the moment of that strip about the y-axis will be x, y, dx. So if you add them all up, starting from zero and going to four, that should be the same as the area of the whole thing. Now the area of the whole thing is simply the area under this curve will just be x cubed dy from zero to four. So that times x bar should equal this. That's just a case of working all of these out. Hey, what have we got? So, but this will be useful for the second part. Well, first of all, I'll have to change that y into something in terms of x, and y is equal to x cubed. So that's actually equal to from 0 to 4 of x to the power 4 dx. We'll put a note here. xy equals x times x cubed equals x to the 4. I'll just leave that. So, what's that then? So that's up to 5, divide by 5, and evaluate it from 0 to 4. That's up to 4, and divide by 4, and evaluate it again from 0 to 4. I forgot my wee x bar. So this is going to be a fifth of 4 to the power 5, minus 0, and that's going to be a quarter of... 4 to the power 4 minus 0, so it's just that. So it's that times x bar. No, so I don't actually need to work this out, because all I'm going to do with that is take it across and divide. And that's quite handy, actually, because when you take this across and divide, the 4 will go across and multiply and give you 4 fifths. 4 to the power 4 will go underneath, and you'll have 5. 4 to the power 5 divided by 4 to the power 4, which is just 4, which means it's equal to 16 upon 5. Now, there was actually a mark for working out the value of this, a quarter of 4 to the power 4, which is obviously 4 to the power 3, which is 64, but you don't actually need it. So I'll just put that mark for evaluating or working out the area. There was another mark for ending up with the area should equal this integral here, the area times it should equal this integral. But there's no final mark stated for this, though. That seemed to come at the end. Now, you've got to do the same with... What's the y-coordinate of that centre? Well, the same thing applies. Only this time, 
you can still you can now you can rotate it about take moments around the x-axis so going around the x-axis the area of the whole thing times y bar should equal each of these little parts now this time the center is in the middle of that that's halfway up so the area of that strip is still y times dx put that down here but this time, since you're taking moments about the x-axis, the distance up to there is just a half of y. So when you're working out the individual little bits, so we're just going down to area because we cancelled out the constant mass per unit area, then the area times the distance will be the y dx times the half y. So it's a half of y times that. But again, since we're, going, we're taking these strips all the way along here, it's still going from 0 to 4. I could jump down this side to that 4 to the power 3 just. So 4 to the power 3y, being the area of the whole thing, would be, they've all got to work out, what's this, a half y squared? Well, a half y squared will be a half of x cubed squared, so that's a half of x to the 6. So it's integral from 0 to 4 of a half x to the 6 dx. So I'll go up to 7, divide by 7, and evaluate it from 0 to 4. So that will be 4 to the power 7 over 14. And that's 4 to the power 3 equals that. So taking that across and divide knocks that down to power 4. So y bar will be 4 to the power 4 over 14. Remember, 4 to the power 4 will be 64 times another 4, but that 4 can cancel with that to make a 2 and a 7, so it's 2 times 64, 128 upon 7. The mark comes in at this part here, because it's only a 4 mark question, but there's quite a lot for it. So we've got the 1, 2, 3, and then the 4th mark's just for stating it. So what's the centre of mass? The centre of mass will be 16 upon 5, and 120 over comma 128 upon 7. Or if you want, that's 3 and 1 fifth, so that's 3.2. And that's 1 carry 5 is 18 and 2 sevenths. And 2 sevenths starts with the 2 and so on. So that would be the 2, 8, 5, etc. So that'll be 3. Whichever you like, probably that one though. I'm just going to give this one as the exact answer. There's four marks. Quite a lot to it though. There was an alternative way of finding the y coordinate of that centre of mass, and that would have been there you go. Instead of taking those vertical strips, since you're rotating it around or taking moments rather about the x axis, you could consider horizontal strips. And then it'd be the same principle, it'd be the area since we're dividing out that constant, times y dashed would be the sum of the area of that times the distance of its centre from the axis, which in this case is just a y. The width of that, since it's in this direction, is dy. And the, width, the length of that would be, now it's not x, it's the rest of x up to 4, so it's actually 4 minus x. So the length of that is going to be 4 minus x, the width of it is dy, and the distance of its centre from the axis is y. OK, it's actually y plus a half of dy, but that's going to disappear. So area, 4 minus x times its width, 4 minus x times dy, distance from the, set, from the axis, y. Only since I'm going this way this time, I'm going to have to go from 0 to, and I didn't put that in because that's obviously 4 to the power 3, that's 64. So you could have done that instead. Now this answer is obviously still the same. So this answer is still 4 to the power 3. So 4 to the 3y bar is going to be from 0 to 64 of, now it's all in terms of y, so that x is no use, so that'll have to be 4 minus, and of course, if where they put it, x would be y to the power of third, dy. Well, I might need to multiply that out, you can't use a product there. 
4y minus y to the power 4 upon 3. When you put 1 back onto it, dy, I'm going to run out of room here, haven't I? So, up to 2 divided by 2 is going to be 2y squared minus, add 1 onto that makes up to 7 upon 3, and then divide by that, so 3 upon 7, from 0 to 64. So, 4 cubed y bar will be... Now, at 64, I think I'll just put 64 down as 4 to the power 3. So that's going to be 4 to the power 6. Well, you could just put that into your calculator. And if that's 4 to the power 3, then the 3 takes it back to a 4, so that's 4 to the power 7. So 3 sevenths of 4 to the power 7. So y bar will be divided by 4 to the power 3, knocks that down to 2 times, and that will be 4 to the power 3 now, minus 3 sevenths of... And that's going to now be 4 to the power 4. And I've run out of room. Again, you can just put that in your calculator. But I could take out a common factor. I'll just do it over here. You could take out 4 to the 3. And be left with 2 minus 3 sevenths of 4. So 2 minus, now 3 times 4 is 12 sevenths. That's 14, so that's 2 sevenths, so it's 2 sevenths of that, so it's 2 sevenths of 64, which is 128 over 7, as before. So you could have done that, but you're probably better just sticking to the original one, keeping the vertical strips.